Welcome to STEMCO's first quarterly live tech talk. My name is Randy Poltz, field support manager for STEMCO. Let's start by going over a few housekeeping items. During the event, there's a chat function available for questions. Keith Fally, one of STEMCO's OEM account managers, will be handling these questions. STEMCO has tech tips that are answered frequently, that answer frequently asked questions. Some of these will be addressed in today's presentation, available at STEMCO.com under resources. In appreciation for, for attending this event, we will pick three people at random to receive a, a Columbia Softshell STEMCO jacket. With that, let's get started. When you're driven by something, you don't need to be reminded of what gives you purpose or where your true north lies. You just know because you've been doing it for as long as we have. And along the way, we built a reputation too for making the roadways safer. And now it's time to embrace it by refocusing and getting back to doing what we do best. Stemco Wheel End and Kingpin products that perform exceptionally, last longer, and save our customers money. Because that's what you get when you're driven by safety. Good afternoon. Welcome to STEMCO Tech Talk. This afternoon, we're going to be covering a wheel end installation, wheel seal installation. Um, we're going to be covering uh, it's three different steps, really. We're going to be looking at what type of wheel end we have to deal with. We're going to go through teardown, parts inspection, cleanup, as well as reinstallation and proper bearing adjustment. Um, what we have here is a trailer suspension. I've got a wheel end here. One of the things I want to mention before we do a wheel seal replacement, one of the things you should actually do, if at all possible, is tear it down to the smallest possible component, meaning remove the wheels, remove the brake drum, and get it down to a bare hub. This way, we're not dealing with 400 pounds of mass. We've got a wheel end, it's 30 some pounds. It's easy to get move around, get it to the parts washer, clean everything up. And it's also one of the things we can do is dial indicate this wheel end where there's no way you can do that with a full dressed hub drum wheel and tires. Um, most of the trailer manufacturers today are running extended warranty programs on their wheel ends. Uh, depending on what wheel end it is, of stem codes, you can either have a platinum or a platinum plus wheel end. The platinum is a three year warranty, the platinum plus is a five year warranty. Uh, most of the major trailer manufacturers now are building the platinum plus, which is a five year parts and labor warranty. And it's easily identifiable first by looking at the hub cap. I have two different versions of the hubcap today. This is our, our Sentinel hubcap. And the Sentinel does not have the removable red rubber plug you've been accustomed to over the years. This has a hard plastic dome over the window. And what's inside it is a one-way vent to let the air pressure out, as well as a Gore-Tex filter to filter the air coming back in. One of them has the the full Sentinel has the tri bar face on it, much more robust cap for uh, maybe construction equipment, flatbed, something where a chain binder may be thrown over it, keep it from busting out the window. The integrated window is simply the plug welded to the window with the uh, Sentinel pieces inside. Okay. But if you see a window like this, good indication that you have a long life wheel end on your trailer, okay? Um, we're gonna begin the inspection by looking for any visible signs of leakage. Now this is normally, it's what we call a number, a level one inspection. It's normally done by the drivers on a walk around daily or through the safety lane where they're looking at things for the shop people to do. First thing we're gonna look for is any signs of visible leaking, leakage around the window ring or around the hubcap, it's the window itself. Um, they should be looking at the window or the oil level in the, or through the, the sight glass. The full level is not the bottom of this red plug. The full level is a line on the hubcap. The add level is down below. Think of this as the dipstick of your engine on your car. Your oil level should be add, at the add or full level between there. It shouldn't be above it or below it. 
look at the hubcap flange. We're looking for any visible signs of damage here from contact, from over torquing a hubcap bolt. And we're also going to look for any visible signs of leakage back here. It's normally why the trailer is in because somebody's noted or noticed a damp or leaking seal. There is a difference between a leaking seal and a damp seal. It's quite possible that you have a situation when you have some misting back there. A leaking seal is actually one that has oil dripping off the bottom and is contaminating the brake shoes. Now, if your brake shoes are soaked with oil, this is the proper time to take them off now and give yourself a lot more room to work with. Let's go ahead and remove the hubcap. When you take the hubcap off, what you're looking for is a gasket behind it, a piece of gasket paper, not a ball of silicone or blue goo or something homemade. It should be a full hubcap gasket. Once again, look at the hub flange. It should be nice and flat, should be straight around there. It shouldn't be all warped and, and uh, kind of waffly. The next step we're gonna do before we begin to remove anything, we're gonna look at the face. This nut on here is called our Pro Torque Spindle Nut. It's identifiable by, by, identif yeah, identifiable by the um, orange keeper that is in there. That keeper needs to be removed before you take the nut off. Failure to do that is gonna end up with spindle thread damage and you're not gonna like the results, okay? You simply remove it using a pocket screwdriver Go down towards the open end off to the back side and pop one side off, then the other. The keeper should come off easily. It's orange on one side, it's not painted on the other side, so that orange side should be facing you. This is a one time use part. It should be discarded at this point. When you put it back together, you put a new keeper in. Before I remove that nut, I am going to throw a dial indicator on it. What I'm checking for here is I want to make sure that bearing adjustment, an improper bearing adjustment, is not the reason we had a seal failure. To check this, we want to rotate the hub a few times, push in, rock it back and forth a little bit, pull out, rock it back and forth, push in, pull out. Right now, my dial indicator shows that there's about two thousandths of end play on that. In proper in play is one to five thousand, so we're good here. Bearing adjustment is not my problem. If that bearing was properly adjusted, and this one is, that nut should come off with your fingers. If you have to put a socket on there, you didn't get any movement with that dial indicator. That's called preload. That is not a condition we want because that limits the amount of oil getting to the bearings to protect them and keep them cool. We're going to go ahead and pull the outer bearing out. I'm going to look at the back of this and it says Stemco on it. That's a Stemco bearing, which means this is a Platinum Plus wheel end. That's a Guardian HP seal or a Discover seal, Stemco bearings, Stemco Pro Torque nut, and Stemco Sentinel hubcap. The combination of those four pieces makes up the standard Platinum Plus wheel end which is the five-year package. I'm gonna set that bearing off to the side, pull the hub off. At this point, you want, if there's oil in it, we wanna take it over to the oil drain, drain it down into the, uh, to the collector and let all that oil run out of there. If it is semi-fluid grease, best thing you can do is take it over to the parts, uh, a garbage can around the parts washer, get some paper towel and go in and <laughs> scrape out all of that waxy, semi-fluid grease that's in there. Get as much out of it as you can before you put it in the parts washer. Before I go to the parts washer with this, I'm gonna go ahead. This the Guardian HP has a metal wear ring to it. This is the seal of choice by most of the major trailer manufacturers. It simply lets them build the axles without turning a hub over to drive a seal in the hub and push it back together. It just fits the way they manufacture things. So at this point, I need to get that ring off. I'm not gonna go get a chisel. I'm not gonna, get a, gonna go get a torch or a big long pry bar. All I'm gonna do is take a hammer. I'm gonna hit down on this ring, bend it flat against the running surface and it will stretch and pop right off. 
just drop a hubcap. Popped right off. All I did was put a stretch in there and allow it to come off. Done no damage to the axle whatsoever. Take that and put it with my seal because I want to inspect the two of those at one time. Next step, I'm going to take some brake clean, wash that down, get a clean rag, clean off the spindle shoulder, which is where the seal rides, the two bearing journals, the threads, and the keyway of the axle. Next step I want to do is I want to feel along this spindle shoulder and I'm looking for any signs of contamination. Usually there is rust or corrosion. Um, we live, if you live up in the, in the uh, rust belt, northern states, you see a lot of corrosion on here. We're going to take a piece of 80 grit emery cloth. We're going to buff this down, top, bottom, sides, all the way around and clean it back a good half to three quarters of an inch. When you drained your oil out, you should take a look at it first. If it's kind of cloudy, that's a sign of oil, or excuse me, water contamination of your oil. It's not uncommon at that point to see some rusting begin down in the oil channel. If you do see that, we need to take a piece of Scotch-Brite. Don't use your emery cloth, it's too rough. Take a Scotch-Brite pad and clean off that rust off of the bearing journals. From that point, we're going to wash this down again. Wipe everything down. If the, bearing, oh, excuse me, we're gonna take a wire brush, go in and clean out the spindle threads, get all the old oil, especially semi-fluid grease builds up in these. So take some time and clean those threads out so we get a good surface to get our bearing adjustment from. Wipe everything off, wipe out the Welch plug. Before we move over to the spindle, one other thing you need to remember to do, if you have ABS brakes on that wheel end, you've got a bracket back here with a sensor sticking through it. Now we don't have a sensor here, but that sensor would be sticking out through there and it will move in and out with some mild pressure to it. It's normally going to be back a little farther because the tone wheel or the tone ring on the hub has pushed it in. So reach in behind it and push it out towards the outside of your spindle as far as you can. Okay, next we're going to remove the old seal. Take a crow foot, tap it between the seal and the bearing, pop it out. Set that seal and ring off to the side. We're going to do some inspection of that a little bit later. Pull the inner bearing, set it off to the side. We will take and clean out our seal bore. Get all of the old oil, grease, everything else out of there. Okay, what I'm going to do at this point, if that seal has failed, this tone ring is going to be caked full of contaminants. Mud, oil, grease, everything that's been floating around back there. Take a wire brush and clean out all hundred of those teeth. That sensor reads off the bottoms of these, these teeth, not the top. So if you don't clean them off, your ABS is probably not going to work properly. Next, I'm going to check the seal bore area. That's where the seal rides. If there's rust and corrosion in there, you get your emery cloth back out, clean that up, get all the rust and crud out of there. It should be nice and bright and shiny, just like this one is before you put it back together. Now in a minute, we're gonna wash this back out, but I wanna look at one more thing before I do that. Look at the bearing cups. This is the first step of your bearing instruction, or bearing inspection, excuse me. Bearing cups should be silver. They shouldn't be brown, blue, purple. They shouldn't have cracks in them. They shouldn't be flaking, any signs of deterioration of metal. We're gonna go ahead and replace those bearings. You always replace your bearings in sets. You replace the inner and outer cup at the same time, or inner and outer cone at the same time. Don't just replace a, a component, okay? 
if everything is good, we're going to go ahead, once again, wash everything down again, get another clean towel, wash everything out, do the same on the outside. Check that outer bearing while you're out here. Any visible damage, nothing there. Next, we're going to go over to component inspection. Okay, what I'm looking for, this is the Guardian seal I just took off. And I'm going to look at the inside diameter. Nothing there. I'm going to look at the outside diameter. That's really the only two things on a Guardian you need to look for. What I'm going to show you are some things that are very common with, with wheel seal failures. If you look at the outside diameter, we're looking for marks look like this. He's cut marks going across. Those are a sign of burrs. A burr is actually a buildup of contaminants. It's actually putting a dent in that seal and letting oil or grease go by on both sides. So one burr like that is actually two leaks. And if we look around this seal, it's got more than its fair share. I counted these things up one time. I think there were 17 of them. The other thing we looked at was the inside diameter. Once again, we've got a burr right here. Another burr right there, two more here. Another big one right there. That's what we use the emery cloth for to clean up. That gets the corrosion, the contaminants knocked down so we don't have a problem. On rubber uh, insulate or rubber ID or OD seals, unitized seals, we have a little different setup because you can't see the burrs nearly as easily as you can in a metal lip seal or a metal case seal. There's two of them on this one. Another one here, another one there, another one there, another one there. Three more here. Also look at the inside diameter. Those rubber beads around there should be nice and straight, just like these are. When you're inspecting one of the Stemco seals, always look at the face area. What we're looking for is if this is dented inward, okay? That's a sign that somebody installed this with the wrong tool, with a, with a competitor's tool or used a flat board or a two by four or something like that to knock our seal in because it's going to knock that together. It's going to impede the free turning of the seal. I'm going to show you in a minute the way our tools are designed to work. One of the other, here's another sign of a bad seal. Now the outside of this one isn't too bad, but the inside diameter is terrible. If I look at the inside, you see all these rubber beads are all credited up. They're wrinkled up. They're pressed together. This happened because somebody didn't clean up that spindle shoulder. And what the end result is, is this gets compressed very tightly when you're putting, when you're putting it up over the spindle shoulder and you end up wearing the internal components together to a point that the friction can actually cause blistering on the rubber on the outside and it burns the inside of the seal apart. So make sure you always inspect inside, outside, and the face of the seal. What I was talking about a minute ago was the way our tools fit. This happens to be a cutaway. You can see all of our tools hit on this outside shoulder. They don't hit up on the face. And as I put this in the tool, you can see a gap in there that goes all the way around. So there's never any impact damage on the face of the seal. Stemco tools are provided for you at no charge. If you look if through your normal Stemco distributors, our part numbering system has the seal number on it. It will also show the individual tool number. The tools are seal or axle specific. So if you've got the TN trailer axle, you're going to have one tool for that. You're going to have one for the TP axle. You're going to have one for the 38 to 46,000 pound drive, one for your 12,000 pound front. All of the tools are marked on the back side or the top side with what seal they install. All of these are designed for that TN axle that we're working on right now. Okay, I talked earlier about bearing, bearing inspection. One of the first things you wanna look at on a bearing is color. Um, this, this one happens to be nice and silver. It looks like it's supposed to except on the back side, there is some damage. 
see where this cage has flattened? When I turn that, that's not a pretty picture. This is a bearing that actually has just fallen on the floor. If a bearing drops on the floor, it's done. Don't pick it up, look around and see if anybody saw you do it, wipe it off and reuse it. Also, if you're putting new bearings on, you want to make sure that there hasn't been any damage from shipping or through distribution. If a bearing falls out of the box, it could land on a flat surface, do something like this before you ever even get it. So always check your bearings. We talked about color a little while ago. This bearing cup shows light brown coloration. The rollers also show the coloration. There's really no deterioration going on here, but if you look at the difference between a good silver one and a brown bearing, it, this is an indication that, that, that this coloration is a sign of heat. To kind of give you an example of what type of heat we're, we're looking at, a wheel end, if it's properly lubed, properly adjusted, should be running down the road at no more than 75 degrees above outside temperature. On a day that's 75 degrees, that wheel end should be running no more than 150 in oil. Semi-fluid grease might be 15 to 20, 25 degrees higher, depending on the amount of lube that's in there. So always be aware of what, what's happening. The metal, as it gets hot, starts to deteriorate. Once again, we look in here, we're starting to see some pitting. Also, this top edge has a, a gouge being cut into it. And if I look on the rollers, I can see in here the deformation. They can get worse and they could come up with something that looks similar to this, which is absolutely terrible. You can see the dark blue coloration on the inner race. The lack of lubrication has caused all this. The, the, the mate to, the, to this one, the inner bearing of this, actually got so hot, it's locked up. I can't turn it. I'm turning the entire unit without the rollers moving. Bearing inspection doesn't take long, but it's very important. Pro torque. When a pro torque comes off, you can see some damage that we've seen on, on keepers. See how this is all mashed up? It's not it locked in place, it's bent. This is the reason we discard them. Another thing to look for on a Pro Torque nut is on the back side. You can see some normal light buffing on we on these, which is perfectly normal. But what we don't want to see is a big deep groove like that. That is a direct cause of a bearing being set too tight, and that inner race is locked in to that cut in the nut. That cannot be reused. It's worn to a point where it has gone through the hardened surface. And you'll also notice this, if you see it on, an, on a inside of a nut, you'll also notice it on the shoulder of the axle where the inner bearing has cut that same type of a groove in there. Once again, that needs to go. If the um, spindle shoulder starts showing that, another thing you wanna look for is signs of wear on your spindle. You'll notice on the bottom edge, usually a fretting uh, pattern. It'll be noticed as uh, kind of an orange or red. And there's a groove that's worn in there from that inner bearing or that bearing race turning and cutting a groove in there. If you notice this groove, measure the axle at three o'clock and nine o'clock, six o'clock and 12 o'clock with a micrometer, subtract the difference. If it's over eight thousandths of an inch, that axle should be replaced. Uh, one other thing on Pro Torque. When we get to the adjustment portion of Pro Torque, I'm going to talk about raised face marks. Okay. On the face of each Pro Torque nut, you have bumps on the face. Those are called raised marks. And what we're going to do when we tighten this down, it will tell you to back it off one raised face marks. These are the bumps that are on there. They'll either be eight or there'll be four, or there'll be three. The adjustment for all of these are exactly the same. Uh, when we get to the bearing adjustment uh, portion, you'll see I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna torque it to 200, I'm gonna back it off, retorque it to 100 foot pounds, and I'm going to then back it off one raised face mark. 
Stemco has also recently introduced a new version of a ProTorque called the ZipTorque. The ZipTorque has one major thing in common, or, or it doesn't have in common, it does not have the replaceable keepers. This is a self-locking nut. When you address this thing down, you're gonna hear like a ratcheting noise. That is the locking mechanism, locking everything together. You'll do the exact same bearing adjustment, but instead of the raised marks, we'll have dots on here. This happens to be the same one for the tape for the TN axle. This has four marks, this has four marks. So they adjust exactly the same. We have everything all cleaned up. Ah, one other thing I forgot. When you inspect your hubcap, look at the inside of it or look at the window. What we're looking for are signs of heat. There is a rough pattern in here that was caused by bo boiling oil, literally tr starting to melt that hubcap window. If you see a sign of that or something like this, where the hubcap window is actually bulged, that's a sign of severe heat. That's bearing adjustment related, plain and simple. This got so hot. When I pulled the cap out, I could take that hubcap plug and you can see the cracks. This thing got so hard and brittle that this literally fried the plug. If you ever see a sign like that, when you go to do your dial indication, you're not going to have any movement there. OK, from from parts inspection, we're going to move over to reinstallation. This hub is our platinum performance wheel end. It had Stemco Guardian seal. We can use one of two different seals to rebuild this. We can use the Guardian that came off, or we can use a Discover. The Discover is a one-piece unitized version. That's what I'm going to put on this time. It comes out of the box, ready for installation. You do not put any oil, Permatex, Blue Goo, or anything else around the outside of this. We've got our hub cleaned up. We're going to take our bearings, pre-lube them lightly. Work that oil in. Set it down in the cup. Wipe my hands off. Get the correct tool. Set the seal inside the tool head. If you turn it over and it doesn't fall out, you have the correct tool. That's about as easy as we can make it. Now, it does also have the correct part number on top. We take a three to five pound hammer. We're going to drive this in until we hear a ping. Rotate it. Hit it. Rotate it. Hit it. From that point, we'll pick it up, slide it up over the spindle, snug it down, pre-lube your inner bearing. Uh, if you are using semi-fluid grease instead of oil, you're going to need to fill that hub cavity half full of grease. And Stemco actually makes a kind of a dog bone looking tool that helps you do that. It fits up against the bottom. You can actually bolt it to the hub cap or to the hub face. You fill your grease half full, have your bearing pre-packed, set it up on there, pull it down, push the bearing in, and it will keep the grease in between the bearings where it's supposed to be. We'll take our ProTorque nut, put it on by hand, and we'll, get, we'll begin our bearing adjustment procedure. With Pro Torque, we're going to take a torque wrench. We'll set it at 200 foot pounds. Do not spin the hub during the initial torque down. All we're doing here is pulling everything in on a straight line. There's 200, we stop, we rotate it several times, torque it once, twice, 
three times. Back it off till it's loose. If you're using a ratcheting torque wrench like I have here, you can most in most cases you can back those off if you know the value you just torqued it to. I'm backing it off at 200 because I just torqued it to 200. Back at one full turn, we will readjust our torque wrench to 100 foot pounds. Once you have this nut backed off, do not move the hub. That will change your outer bearing. It'll make it slide out. It means you need to retorque to 200. We'll retorque this up to 100 foot pounds. Spin it. Torque it. Torque it. Torque it. Now, the instructions said to back that nut off one face mark. On here, I've got a mark right here, one here, one here, and one here. All I'm simply going to do is mark, take this raised mark and back it over to here. And there's a couple different things you can do. You can either use a hubcap hole and give yourself something to mark with, or you can take a Sharpie and put a mark on your spindle. We're going to back this mark up to here. Put my finger right there. Back it to there. Take it off. Get a new keeper. Now we can tell if you've reused the old keeper, excuse me, because the paint will be worn away from the top. Always use a new one. This goes in with the orange side out. It's not painted on the other side. These little tabs are only there to keep it from going in backwards. We're going to take this upper tab, put it in place first. It goes in at about a 45 degree angle underneath into that groove. The bottom cab tab goes in the keyway. We take a pocket screwdriver, click this in place, lift the other side, click it in place, take the screwdriver, put it between that tab and the keyway, inspect the teeth, make sure that they're meshed. Final step. We will take the torque wrench, or excuse me, the dial indicator. It's been a long day. Turn your hub several times. Push it in, rotate it a little bit, pull it out, push in, pull out. I'm just shy of two thousands in play. What that amounts to, I want to show you something to equate two thousandths of an inch. I've got a gum wrapper. Just a plain old gum wrapper and a digital caliper. And if I put that gum wrapper in there, close those teeth, that is 0 0.0025, two and a half thousandths of an inch. Right now, that's what I've got for in play in this wheel end but that is spread over a seven and a half inch area. You have to have in play to allow oil and grease to circulate to keep things cool and lubricated. If it's at preload or crush, you have no idea how tight it really is. Next step, we're going to find my hubcap gasket and my hubcap. Make sure everything is clean. Always make sure your hubcap bolts have split washers on them. For the sake of time, I'm only going to put two on rather than six. You snug them down with your fingers all the way around. Torque the hubcap bolts down to 12 to 16 foot pounds with a torque wrench. We would start on one side. Go to the opposite side. Tighten them in a star pattern and then go around and hit them one more time all the way around. Now, the final thing we need to do is add oil to this hub. 
this being an oil hub cap, we're going to fill it through a pipe plug on the top. And instead of filling that oil with that plug at 10, or excuse me, at 12 o'clock, turn it over to the two o'clock position. That way oil can go in, circulate around, the air is going to come back out the top. You're not going to have oil bubbling out at the top as the air is trying to get out. We're going to fill it to the bottom of the red plug, let it drain down, keep continue doing that until your oil line settles between the add and full line. Put the magnetic plug in, torque it down to five to nine foot pounds. That is a tapered fitting, so if you over torque it, you can actually split this boss and you will have a leak. From that point, what we're going to do is we're going to put the brake drum back on, put the wheels back on, torque everything to spec, readjust your brakes, turn it out the door. Um, there was a chat form, or excuse me, question for a question and answer form. Keith Valley, one of our OEM techs, was managing that for us. Um, hopefully, you, if you had any questions, he's got you answered or got everything answered. I want to thank you for attending. Your certificates for the STEMCO clinic will come back to your register, your reg the same email that you registered on, and it'll come in, a, and there'll be a PDF form. Um, this tech talk will have a link on it uh, where your, from where your certificate comes from. And then as a um, expression of our gratitude, three people were, were chosen to receive STEMCO coats. Tucker Morgan, Nate Collins, and Roman Garcia have been chosen at random, and we will be sending you a uh, certificate for the STEMCO company store. Once again, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you for using STEMCO products.